What do you know? Ace King again on the button. This is the Knight of Ace King. I'm on the button. Two limpers to me, so I make it 25 to go. The small blind makes the call. Low jack and the cutoff also come along. The flop is 5, 8, 7. Cutoff now leads for 55. If we were heads up, I might make this call, but multi-wave with just an ace high. I'm going to be folding here. This is a battle I'll probably lose to a flop straight set or an open-ended draw. We're now in the small blind. There's a $10 straddle on the button, and the under-the-gun calls. It's folded over to me, and I look down at the Bradley hand again. Last time I just called and it didn't work out so well, so this time I'm raising it up. I make it 60 to go, everyone folds. Bradley for the win. Next hand, we are in the cutoff. Stu is back from dinner break and I have five four clubs in the cutoff. There are two limpers to me, so I limp along. Stu completes and the lunatic big blind checks. Flop is king two three. This is a nice flop. Top end of the open ended straight draw with a backdoor flush draw. This is about as good as it gets with this hand and I've got position on everyone. It checks to the leg, hijack, who bets out pot. I call, and Stu calls behind. Now the turn comes a jack of clubs. This just keeps getting better. I've now picked up the flush draw to go with my open-ended. Even better, the hijack now bets out 60. This seems like top pair to me. I should probably be raising here with all this equity and no showdown value. But for some unknown reason, I just call, hoping that Stu is going to call as well, but he insta-folds. Rivers the six of spades, nailed the straight, Spades came in, but I'm not putting him on a spade draw. He checks. I think about what size I need to go. I settle a 90. It's about half pot. I think a big king, two pair, or a set is going to have to call this bet. He thinks for a while, checks his cards, and then makes the call. I instantly show the straight, and he mucks. Now, this one's a good one. We are plus one under the gun limps, and we've got the best hand we can get. Pocket aces. We bump it up to 15. Stu has been getting pretty lucky. His stack is monstrous. We're hoping he's going to call or raise it, but nope, he folds again. The cutoff lunatic does raise though to 40 and it folds back to me. I don't want to give away I have aces. He's super aggressive. I can count on him for betting pretty much every street if I check to him, giving me a chance to check raise anytime I want. It comes king ace 10. That's a great flop, but queen jack also nails it. I continue with the plan and check it over to him. He uncharacteristically checks behind. There are no flush draws on board, so he could do this with a straight two pair or any lower pair. Turn is the eight. Doesn't change anything except for bringing in a backdoor flush draw. I can't let it check through though. He probably has nothing, but might call a draw. I bet out 75. He's a non-believer. He quickly calls. River is a two of spades. The river is as blank as it gets. If he has the straight, he's got me. Otherwise, I've got the second nuts. If he has a weak hand, he's not going to bet. He might call. He is pretty sticky. If he's got a big hand, he's going to bet or raise. Either way, if he has nothing, this particular aggressive player probably won't bluff here. I decide to try and get value from two pair holdings, which are definitely in his range, and he would play this way. Being afraid, I might have the straight. I bet out 160. It might be better to go a little bit lower, maybe down to 80 or 100 to get a call from those weaker hands, but it is what it is. He folds quickly, and the buddy bucks are piling up. Now the hijack limps. He's bought back in a few times now. He's a 2-5 player. These 2-5 players here are almost always limp with just about every hand extremely wide. I decide to play my position and raise it up to $15 with jack five of hearts. Stu folds again. I can't get him to play any pots with me. The lunatic small blind calls and the hijack does call. Flop comes seven king seven. That's a great flop for my position and both of their ranges are capped, giving me the nut advantage as well. They both check to me as expected. I bet out 45. Usually I go small on paired boards, but I'm gonna put maximum pressure on these guys as the whole plan was never to play my actual hand anyway. The small blind folds, but the hijack calls, all according to plan so far. Turn comes the king of diamond. This is actually a great card for us. With the board pairing, any small pairs, 2-2 two, two, to 6-6 six, six, are no junk. Any non-ace cards are basically junk as well, even if he happened to have a 7. He has to be worried I had the king the whole time. Perfect card to continue barreling, but I was planning on betting pretty much any card anyway. I bet out 90, and he insta folds. It's folded to me in the hijack with queen 10 of diamonds. It's good enough for a raise. We're only seven handed. I make it 15, only the lunatic calls. I won't have position, so this means I'll have to do a lot of checking and raising instead of betting. 
Flockham's 8-9 deuce. Bad flop for me. Great for him. I stick with the plan and check it. He checks behind, and we're off to the turn. So 10 of spades. This card may be good or bad. It puts a straight out there, but also gives me a gut shot and top pair. It's worth a bet. I bet out small, just 15, targeting an 8 or a 9. Ace-X, backdoor spade draw. He makes the call. Rivers the 6. This is not so great hand. As many 7s that we're calling on the turn just got there. My hand is marginal at best. I go for thin value here, targeting jack 10 and lower. If he raises small, I can call. Sometimes he does raise with second or third pair though, not often. If he raises big, I can just fold. He does raise pretty big, $75. The pot is now 169 and I have to call 40 to see it. I think I'm beat here, but getting four to one, I'm not sure I can fold. I basically have a bluff catcher because stacks on the table are so big. I decided to make this call as I'm certain I can get this back later if I lose this hand. I should probably just be folding though. Even though he's a lunatic, he's almost always got something with raises. He flips over seven, eight offsuit, hitting the straight on the river. Ace King, theme of the night. Again, under the gun bets out 20. I'm not going anywhere. I like to just call this time and see what everyone else does. Only the lunatic calls. My hand strength is disguised, and if I completely miss, I don't have any issues simply folding. Flop comes 4, 8, 10. Plus one bets out 60. I completely missed the flop. The plan was to fold if I missed. I've got a lunatic behind me, and this bet seems to be an overpair, two pair set, or possible. Overcards of the flush draw, all of them crushing me. It's an easy fold. Can you guess what hand this one is? Yup, you guessed it. Ace King again. Under the gun limps, plus one limps. I'm in the cutoff, and the hijack raises it up again, this time to 35. I could raise your call here. In position, I like just to call this time. Plus one comes along. Flop is five, do six. Plus one checks the pre-flop aggressor. Surprisingly, he checks as well. This flop doesn't hit anyone's range well. I do have a backdoor flush. The backdoor straight is worthless as a six makes a higher straight. Either of my overcards could be good if they hit, and my ace is probably best right now. 3-3 three, three or 4-4 four, four would probably bet on this board with a gut shot, and knowing this isn't a great board for anyone else, I decide on checking. An ace, king, or more small cards are good for me on the turn. Turn is a 10 of hearts. This is not a good card for me. I still have overs, but both of them have a lot of 10s in their range. I do as well, but there's no way I would be able to bluff them off of this hand. Hijack now bets with half pot. I don't see I have a choice here. Plus one could be slow playing a big hand, and I have nothing. I give it up. Next hand, Lunatic makes it $6 button straddle. The low jack makes it 20 The deep stacks we're playing with, I go ahead and call it with 5-3 of clubs in the hijack. Stu finally gets in a hand, and the Lunatic makes the call. Flop comes four, five, six. Low jack checks it, and I lead out for 70. These guys are pretty sticky. I have middle pair with an open-ended and a backdoor flush draw. I'd prefer they just all lay it down now. One by one, they fold till we get back to the low jack who decides to call. He probably has a couple of over cards or else would have bet this out himself. Turn comes a three of spades. The pot is getting pretty big now. I hit two pair, so we are ahead of any over pairs. I lost my gut shot as now I'm playing the board for a straight. He checks to me again. I think about it for a little while and decide on the same bet, $70. Now I'm not looking for a fold. I'm looking for a call from over pairs. He very quickly makes the call. Remember is the ace of diamonds. This is a good card for me because if he was calling down light with an ace, he just hit his top pair. He's not going to put me on an ace, so if he thinks I was betting with middle pair, then he just got ahead. With a four card strand on board, he could easily have a two or a seven. If he bets, I can call. If he checks, I bet and he raises, I'll have to fold. I know he's capable of bluffing in spots like these, so when he checks to me, I decide to just check it back. For the same reason, I don't want to face a raise. I don't think a weaker hand is going to call anyway. I play it safe. I show the 5 3 clubs, and he flips over 4 3 for a smaller two pair. No idea why he was raising a straddle with 4 3 in middle position, but this is exactly why I play these games. There is a button straddle for 6 and four callers. I look down at a6 spades in the big blind. I call as well. The guy on the button often raises his straddles unless he has total junk, so either way he goes, it defines his range pretty well. Most everyone else is limping with junk. He does raise it up, flipping the chips high up in the air. He makes it $50 on top. He probably has a middle to premium pair, or a couple of face cards. Small blind thinks a while and calls. 
I call as we are deep stacked, everyone else fold. Flop comes four, five, ten. Both a small blind and I check in the dark over to the button. The button is acting pretty upbeat. It usually means he has he really likes his hand. Not only that, but flipping the chips up pre-flop also indicates he's happy with his hand along with knowing he is overly tight. He ends up betting out $65, which is only a third of the pot. A small blind fold, and with a gut shot, backdoor flush, and deep stacks, I decide to call and see what happens on the turn. The turn is the two of clubs. It's not a card I was hoping for, but I do pick up another gut shot. Any seven or three now gives me a straight. This time he bets out 155 right around half pot. I think about it a while and get the feeling he's not as strong as he's playing out to be. I'm thinking he's likely got ace-x or king-x, those big cards that he likes to bet with. He doesn't bluff much, but I also have a double gutter. I decide to call. If I can hit my card, I can probably get stacks in. He loves getting stacks in, even with top pair. River is the eight. Pot has ballooned up. I missed my draws. I did hit the eight, so at least I have some showdown value. If he bets small, I can call with the bluff catcher. If he bets big, I'll have to give this one up. I check it over and he thinks about it for a while before saying, I give up. I flip my hand over, we're good. Not what I expected at all, but he did have two bigger cards. He bet small with his bluffs and could not pull the trigger on the river. Next hand, the low jack limps again, so I limp behind in the high jack. Stu now raises it up to 20. The big blind calls, low jack calls. I'm not going anywhere, I call. Three, four, five. Everyone checks his two, who surprisingly checks behind. He doesn't bluff, but he's fairly aggressive, so this caps his range. Seven of clubs. It checks to me, this time I'm going to bet out. I've got an over pair as well as a gut shot. I'm trying to consciously get more polarized, especially on the turn. I make it 60, and everyone folds. We're still short-handed. Under the gun leaves out for 21. I'm obviously calling here with 3-3. Three, three. Stu is in. A decent old lady coffee with a short stack comes along. Flop comes 9-2-4. The flop checks around. Stu doesn't bluff, so he's probably got nothing. OLC doesn't bluff either, but she would usually bet her strong hand, so she probably has nothing either. Under the gun bets both strong and weak hand. He's been losing a lot and is on tilt, so it's hard to say what he might be doing on this particular hand, but... He probably doesn't have anything either. Turn is an eight of spades. Now the under the gun bets out for 40. Even though I could be ahead here, OLC could have a weak nine, eight, and under the gun could have slow played a monster on the flop. The best move is probably to raise to around 120 to 150, but instead I just wimp out and fold. Back in the small blind and we pick up, you guessed it, ace king again. This hand has not been good for us all night. Button saddles for 15. Under the gun lunatic calls. OLC calls. I need to win with Ace King once in a while. I've been just calling with it, so this time I blast it up to 60. Lunatic doesn't hesitate to call. Surprisingly, OLC calls quickly, as does the button. So we're going four ways to the flop out of position with $244 already in the pot. Flop comes four, six, queen, two clubs. I check to see if the ace or the king is the club and then check it out of position. Lunatic now puts in $200. He only does this with big hands. OLC folds and now the button jams for the rest of his rebuy. About $750, nothing for me to do here but fold. The turn in the river are the king of diamonds, and three of spades, Lunatic rolls over pocket sixes and takes down a massive pop. Next, we're in the cutoff with a, another ace king. Maybe this time we can do something for us. I throw out $20, everyone folds, at least it finally won. We're in the big blind, Lunatic makes it 15. The button calls, a small blind folds. I look down at ace four clubs. We're really deep, so I call. Flop is two of clubs, nine of clubs, king of diamonds. I check with the intention of check raising, but it checks around. Turn is the queen of diamonds. I now lead out for 30. I don't have any showdown value, but I do have the flush draw. Only the button calls. River is a six of clubs. Bank, nailed it. Now how to maximize profit. I think for a bit and decide on a polarized bet. I put out 90. He must have missed his diamond draw though. He folds. And our last hand, we're in the small blind. There are three limpers and I pick up six, six. I complete. 
The big blind checks is an option, and the flop comes six, king, eight, all hearts. Because this is a limped pot, I should be betting out on this flop. Instead, I check, hoping that someone else will bet. It checks around. Jack of diamonds on the turn. I can't let it check through again. I make it 10, and OLC is the only caller. River comes the king of clubs, pairing the board. I'm hoping that she has a king as I boat up. I bet over pot, hoping she's going to raise me. $40. She insta folds, asking if my kicker is better than hers. This is the last significant hand. Stu has left the building. The guy on my right has left. It's time to get some food. I rack up and head out. Right, T we are. Uh, it's about seven hours or so later. Took a little bit of time for dinner. So played for six and a half hours. Uh, it was uh, pretty crazy. Had to rebuy a few times. But a couple big hands made a huge difference. And so we were in for 1000 out for 1385 for $385 win. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Ring the bell so you get notified when these are uploaded. Enjoy.